It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Must be Thursday night. It's Thursday night. We're in the cabin at 7.30, 7.31. We're just a just a touch late. Well, not too by the late. time you click through all, and we had to wait, so yeah. we were right on time, actually. We were on time. We were. So it's good evening right. here in Michigan. A little Absolutely. chilly today, but not too bad. You know, a little, it was very nice yesterday, yeah. 50s. A little chilly today, but it's, I'm hearing 60s for next Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, that's me. Yep. Yeah. I got all my so sounds down. Yeah, I just killed uh, what I was trying to get up here. There we go. Let's try it again. There we go. <laughs> all right. Jim Stephens in the house tonight. Mark Coleman. Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, Todd and I I'm not going to say your last name, Todd, because I butcher it every time. What's up with you, Jim? Tammy Delk's watching as well. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hello, everybody. They're starting to pile in. It's going to be a good night tonight in the cabin, I think. So I hope so. I think so. So uh, with that being said, Danny, are you ready? Um, you say when? Sure. All Let's right. Go. Here we go. Stand by in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Edinburgh Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight on a beautiful Thursday evening here in mid-Michigan with Dan DeFaw. What is going on? Oh, this weather is a changing here and there, and it's looking good. It is. It is. It, we're, it's going to be better next week. It is going to be better next week, and we're into March, so let's... It, you know, I, I, I put my hand up to my ear, and I hear a distinct little... Faint gobble off in the distance. It's not that far. You know, it's coming. It's coming. It is coming. There's no doubt about it. Times and weather are a changing. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get into it tonight, man. Let's, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We do get a lot of stuff. But let's talk first about our supporters that support us. And the first one that we want you to help us support is uh, Buck Bates. Nothing better than going over to buckbaits.com. And if you want 20% off your order, use the promo code UPNORTHJOURNAL. And you can get 20% off your order. But that's not all. But that's not all. A big shout out and a safe travel to Lincoln Roan over at Packer Max because he is on his way to the Iowa Deer Classic. Iowa Deer Classic. Correct. And if you want 25% off your order when you order a Packer Max from him, give him a call or go to the website packermax.com. Tell him UNJ25 and he'll give you $25 off your order. All right. And... Need a call? Need a mouth call? Turkey season's coming up. It is. Nothing better than going over and seeing Paul and Amy over at jpogamecalls.com. And get uh, 10% off your order if you use the promo code UNJ10. I have one more, but we're not going to talk about it yet. No, but I do have my JPO game mouth calls right here. Yes, you do. Mine are sitting on my desk at work, too. Got them ready to go. So Drinking a little bit of coffee tonight, too. You're drinking coffee. We got the mouth calls. The only thing we don't have is, is like, something to cook. Well, you know, it won't be long. We'll be doing some grilling. I mean, it, it is getting to be that time of year, I do believe. Right? Well, why don't we just get into it, man? Let's do it. Introduce them. Well, we talk, we, we, we kind of teased it last week that we were going to have somebody on here from Oklahoma. Yes, and we do. But we do. Dave Bosca from Wild Seasoning from Wellston, Oklahoma, is joining us tonight for the show. Welcome, Dave. Welcome yourself. I appreciate the invite. <laughs> so what is going on in Oklahoma? I mean, you're a long way away from, from Michigan here. So, I mean, we, we did talk about this a little bit before we started the show, but, but you, you actually got a little snow out there here recently, I do believe. Yeah, we was part of that crazy... Um, Siberian weather that came through here in Oklahoma. I mean, right now it's probably averaging 60 degrees, but about, let's see, about two weeks ago, we had negative 14 degrees and about 12, 14 inches of snow. And let me tell you, for us down here, that is way too much. I would say so. But you know what? That 60, come on, man. You, you're killing us. Right? <laughs> it was like 33 to here today. So, <laughs> and windy. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> and, and for people watching on the live stream, uh, you look over Dave's shoulder and you, you see a bow sitting there. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But that's right. He, he is into archery. 
<laughs> and he shoots a PSC. So this is going to be really good. Uh, a quick shout out, Jim Stephan says April 20th, their turkey season opens in Wyoming. So when does turkey season open out there in Oklahoma? Just as a quick question. Uh, I'm thinking we're about 30 days out or better. Okay. Yep. All right. It's coming right around the corner. You know, and if you're to shoot a turkey, you need to cook it, right? The, absolutely. That's and, what we want to talk about. Right. We, we want to talk about wild seasoning and what all you have to offer. And But we're going to kind of first learn about the man Dave himself. You know, there's nothing better than finding out the owner, operator, and a, and a world champion barbecuer. That's what I've heard. Yeah. So he's got to tell us how he, how he ended up getting into the seasoning business. So where did you start with this this whole seasoning and barbecuing and uh, grilling and all that? Well, barbecue was kind of my second passion, in all honesty. I've got 34 years in the meat business. I've owned, operated meat processing plants, worked in retail, wholesale, did slaughtering. I've, I've done all of it, and that's, that's my history. My family lineage is bricklaying, and I know when I was 14 years old working with Dad in the summertime, I didn't want nothing to do with that. That's hot and hard work. So I had to find something that I could do. Um, and so I kind of got into cutting meat at a local grocery store, and I just fell in love with it. And ever since then, I've kind of owned my own place. Um, we still did the farm killing. We do all that. We started out real small. We got, actually got pretty big and got into doing wild game. We, we were doing, for us, it was a lot because we still had our farmers we had to take care of. But we were doing between four and 600 deer a year and we got to know a lot of people in it. And we were making eight to 10,000 pounds of summer sausage. And then we'd make bratwurst and snack sticks. And oh my gosh, just all kinds of different sausages for the wild game. And gosh, we have processed caribou, bear, um, neil guy. Um, we had some hunters from Africa come in. Uh, and then obviously all the little things you can imagine. And we would make pheasant sausage, goat, uh, goose sausage, duck, um, everything you can imagine. We, we got into it. And I shot archery, got into it really heavy. I traveled all over the United States shooting lots of different archery. And I actually broke my back, hurt it really, really bad. I was, I was under the weather for about eight months to a year. And those old male competitive juices were still flowing in me. And being in the meat world and having smokers in the shop and doing hams and bacon and then all the sausages we'd learned to do over the years, I actually seen an article that was talking about doing a competition barbecue. Well, I thought, you know, maybe I could do that and kind of step into that world equal with other people. Didn't know if I'd ever get a I say step in ahead of anyone, but equal. And we did. And let's see, it's been about 12 years later. We've won over 100 different state championships. We've got two world titles. And a year and a half ago, I decided let's get back into what brought me to the show. And I started wild seasoning. I wanted some sausage seasonings, bratwurst seasonings, and what I call topicals, the stuff that goes um, on the exterior of the meat that will help and flavor wild game and it be the flavors that we've got into in barbecue. In our competition barbecue, it has to be a one bite um, taste because they'll take a bite of a brisket and that's it. You're not eating a plate full of meat. So how we made all of our venison sausage and what we've got now is flavors that you're not going to find in a big box store or any of the mass retailers just by the sheer types of flavors we've got. The flavors are bold. They're right up front. They're in your face. We love that. We wanted the type of quality of seasonings that honor the time that the hunters put into the woods and their hunt itself. We wanted them to be able to get those flavors back out of it. And ultimately, being I, I hunted in the past a lot. I don't hunt now much at all. I don't have time, really. But... I understand that if you're the hunter, if you're the wife of the family or the husband of the family, whichever one hunt or they both hunt, whatever, if the opposite one doesn't hunt and doesn't like the flavor of that animal, you have less chance to get to go. So we <laughs> right? developed all of our different flavors to allow the hunter something that would allow the cook in the family something to use that gives us more chance to go. Absolutely. Simple as that. 
Well, we've got a few of them here to, to look at. And I, I tell you, the first thing that really caught my eye, Danny already knows which one it is, is the desert dust. I got to imagine that's, is that got a little kick to it, a little heat? Absolutely no. No, really? I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. Okay. I've got, no, I don't have one of them back behind me. See, no, the desert dust is that, that it looks like charcoal, for lack of better words. It's kind it's of great. A, it's great. Yeah. If you open it up and taste it, it will blow your mind right here on screen. It is. All right. And while he's doing it's, that, it's, I think I'm I got not, one. I'm not going to say what I get out of it. Because everybody on their palate, they get different things out of different flavors. People okay. get sweet. They get savory. Some get heat. Um, I'm very sensitive to heat. Okay? Okay. But I, uh, I, I, I pick up savory like crazy. Um but sweetness, I don't pick up a lot of sweet when I'm eating. Uh, who's who's trying it? Danny or Mike? Well, well, Mike, Mike. I, I got the desert. One. I've got the desert dust here. I grab the habanero and mango flavor bratwurst mix. That's hot. <laughs> well, that's why I, I, I that's why I grabbed it because I know Mike is going to go for this one because it's got habanero in it. Okay. Uh oh, Mike. Mike tasted it. This is good. Uh, <laughs> give me a spoon. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's oh, hard to describe. It's really it's hard. It's got a citrusy. It's got lime. It's yeah. got some different things in it like that. So, that's so, what it is. So, okay. exp so explaining what you said, the especially when you got into the competitions, right? It, it, you need to give them the flavor in one taste. Wow. And yeah. and and the, that's kind of the backbone of where you you go with these seasonings, right? This desert dust. It, go go ahead. I, I I'll say this afterwards. Go ahead. Answer his question. That is absolutely right, because like I said, we go with one bite, and I wanted something to where you could sprinkle it on lightly or heavily, and it's not going to overpower with salt, overpower with sugar, but the flavor is just going to be intensified if you want more flavor. Just like one of the summer sausages we have, which is my favorite, and that is the New Mexico Hatch Chili Summer Sausage. I actually use that a whole lot in making Mexican dishes. Okay. Well, I want to say you, you're talking about the desert. You you mentioned the the lime and the citrus in it. I gotta imagine this would be really good with with like uh, seafood or fish, uh, you know, uh, freshwater fish, things of that nature. It really, it's gonna go good on anything, probably. It's really good on fish. We have fell in love with it on duck breast. I was gonna say chicken, My maybe son. so some fowl. Yeah. Yeah. My son's a big duck hunter, and that that is kind of what we did a lot with the different ducks that he would bring in, and that right there is was was my my thought process with it. Well, let's take a quick step back a little bit. You said two time world champion. Uh, what was it? What was the title? Pitmaster, or barbecue? We barbecue champion. Barbecue we champion. Have won, uh, yes, in 2012. We won the World Food Championships in the barbecue. It was held out in Las Vegas. There was, I don't know, a hundred other different cooks from all over the world. Um, we ended up uh, beating a chef from the Paris, somewhere from Paris. Don't make me lie. I don't know where it was from. <laughs> but <laughs> um, we've been on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, um, six or eight episodes of that on the Discovery Channel, different places like that. We did a... I cook on pellets. I'm a pellet cooker. And so we also did a little deal for the History Channel. And it was called the History of and the Future of Barbecue. And I obviously, I was the one cooking for the future. Like pellets is revolutionary. Um, but I, I got to do a little bit for that. And I don't even know if that ever made it out of the cutting room floor. But we did do something for them also. Okay. Well, I got to ask. Okay. So you, you said you're a two-time uh, champ. World champ, what did you make? In these contests, we cook chicken, okay, uh, ribs, smoked pork butts, and brisket. Okay. The second world championship was in 2018. It was held down in Tennessee at the Jack Daniels Distillery. I know where that's at. Not far from my home uh, homestead <laughs> or home place down in northern Alabama. Wow, Danny, don't don't pay attention. We're just back here sampling while you're we're talking. We're like you talk. We do have one question that, that that's come across the okay. live feed. And what would you, uh, out of your flavors, what would you recommend for turkey? 
Oh, well, that, to me, I'd put a first, I like on, on turkey chicken, on the uh, first layer, I'd put a thin layer of the wild addiction. I love that wild addiction. If you try that on the show, you're going to see what I mean. But I'd put a thin layer of the wild addiction. And then I, w I would probably put uh, the either the Timberline Rub or the Mountain Stream. The Mountain Stream is designed for the seafood, actually. It's got herbs and rosemary, things of that nature in it. And then the Timberline is probably the closest to a standard barbecue type rub. But either one of those two would make a great topping. It's just according to what you're trying to get out of it. If you want a traditional Thanksgiving style, I'd put the um, Wild Addiction and probably step back and do our campground seasoning, which is a hickory flavored seasoned salt. And that's what I really like about the campground is we use that a lot with fried potatoes, um, baked potatoes. Um, heck, I like just doing it with popcorn and even fried eggs, but that campground yes. seasoning is. Oh, we're going right. to get along just great. <laughs> As I, I've, I'm always trying stuff on popcorn and my eggs and on vegetables. Oh, yeah. I think people are missing out yeah. when they don't. But I will yep. say, the habanero's hot. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> but good. I had to sign a disclaimer. Yes. Woo, man, that's well, good. That's the thing. Let, let's just call it what it's. It's a habanero and mango. That's yeah, right. Right. You should get a mango flavor up front, and then the habanero steps oh, in. It does but step you in. Should, it stepped in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, that's good. Yep. yep. And I do like, I, I like a little bit of spice. Uh, I like putting that stuff on, like I said, popcorn, you know, spice up some popcorn. But yeah, that, that, that had a, a nice, had a real nice kick to it. And actually, Jerry Lambert, who's asking about turkey, try some habanero mango on that. I think I'd do it right. Make that turkey the thing hot. With the like the habanero mango you're speaking of, that's what, that's in our bratwurst line. And we've got the others, the smoked applewood um, seasoning, the beer and bratwurst, the herb and tomato. The thing with bratwurst, I don't want people to be scared and think, oh, I don't have all that equipment to stuff it into um, casings and go grill a bratwurst link. The thing that's great about that is bratwurst, can you, you just mix it right into your ground venison, your ground elk, whatever you have, make a patty, and you want to talk about make the best gourmet grilled patty by adding these type flavors, and you don't have to stuff it. You don't have to do that. You can make a bratwurst patty and just go grill it. Nice. Okay. Hey, I got a question here for you before we're going to go to our first break here. We'll run just a little bit long, but uh, our buddy Jim out in Wyoming, he says because of where he lives, and he says that he... Uh, he loves antelope, but a lot of people out there hate it because they don't know how to process it correctly. What would you recommend putting on antelope? Antelope, with it being as dark as antelope is, I think the timberline would work really well with it. I think that'd be a great one. The desert dust is, is going to be too citrusy for me, for my personal taste. Okay. But I, I think the timberline would be absolutely, I'm sorry, timberland. I keep saying line. The timberland rub, I think that would be great for like on the back strap and things like that. Okay, we've got a bunch of questions coming in here. I tell you what, let's take a break. Uh, we come back. Uh, we got something here on smoking. We got smoking. We yeah. got uh, well, just so everybody knows. Uh, also, wild seasonings can be found with our friends at Deer Camp at their brick and mortar store in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Or they can go to wildseasoning.com and check it out. There you go. I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to step outside, and we come back. Uh, I want to get into, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions here about wild game meat, but we want to talk about getting it prepared maybe since you're a butcher or a former butcher and, and preparing that or preparing it in the field uh, or field dressing it properly and getting it to the table. So we'll talk about that when we come back. We'll be right back after this. All right, everybody on our live feed. Keep throwing those questions at us while we, me and Mike, sit here. We're sampling. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're opening them up live on the show because I just brought the box over for Mike. and I, I was called a lightweight for the habanero. Yeah, uh, Buck Bates is calling Mike a light uh, lightweight for the habanero. No, it, it was good. It's just, it, I was, wasn't expecting it? I, I wasn't expecting. Imagine uh, that on popcorn. I wasn't expecting to step in like that. That's nice, though. It has a real nice flavor profile. I love that. Yeah. That urban tomato bratwurst, we make meatballs with that. That is phenomenal. And then you can just grill them 
Okay. Have them, throw them in your deep freeze, and then just it's so easy to make venison meatballs and then just pull them out as you need throughout the summer. Wow. I, I'd say uh, I'm going to have you on speed dial. Hey, I'm cooking this tonight. What should I try? Right? No <laughs> no doubt about you would it. Be, it's, it's not surprising how often I get phone calls all night long, and my wife knows what it is. She, <laughs> she understands it. <laughs> yep, I sit and talk cooking all the time. That's good. That is good. Oh, man. All righty. Oh, oh one second here. You, you said you use the, the herb and tomato for venison? Mm. I can understand why. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Stand by in three, two, and one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. We've been sampling more of the oh, have different we been rubs sampling? here. Oh, man, I tell you what, it's good stuff. So uh, before we get into anything, um, just so we can show and, and tell everybody that we, you know, the reason why we're having Dave on is we're also uh, striking up a partnership with Wild Seasons for the year. So from now on, uh, Dave and Up North Journal are going to be partnered. And courtesy of Dave, he's offering a promotional code for our viewers. What is that, Dave? UNJ. wonder what that stands for. Right. UNJ 2021. There you go. That's pretty easy. And you'll get 10% off your order when you check out. So there you go, folks. Uh, quick question before we get rocking into this segment here. Okay, uh, so do they have? Do you have sample packs, or do you have to just take the whole bottle? I mean, he, somebody's looking for maybe two or three different little sample packs to try. No, we don't have sample packs, and that has everything to do with the volume that we do to mix it. Gotcha. The, the we we mix it in five hundred pound mixes, and that comes off of a certain line. All of our sample bag stuff comes off another line completely, and it's just 500 pounds in sample packages would be about 20,000 little one-ounce sample packages, <laughs> and that just that just doesn't comprehend in a business mind to go. I'm gonna give away this. Doesn't but fit into the business that model. Is, <laughs> well, it's I'm just afraid this the the product's gonna go stale. And then it doesn't do me any good as someone sampling something that's stale. Right. I, as a as an end user myself, I, I wouldn't want that. It could so go it could go I, wrong I more than it could go right. Right. Exactly. So no, unfortunately, we don't. You know, and one of the questions coming uh, coming through uh, is how long is it recommended aging venison before processing it? Processing it. That's a wonderful question, and I'd say aging has a lot to do with the final, um, the way you cook it, okay? I'm a firm believer in aging venison in an ice chest with water, okay? Fill it up a, a lot. Let's say a uh, 30-quart 30 30 ice chest, fill it with ice water, but what you need to put in there is about a half a cup of salt, okay? okay. And the reason so is... Salt starts an osmosis process, and in the venison meat, what we're trying to do is pull out a little bit of the blood Mm -hmm. because the blood is what will alter their flavor That for the folks that don't like the the gaminess flavor. So without the salt, all you're going to do is get maybe an eighth-inch surface penetration. But on a cell structure, it takes salt to do an osmosis. And over a week to 10 days, and you have to change it out about every other day or every day, well, probably every day for the first week. After that, you can go to every other day. But add your half a cup of salt in there, just regular table salt, non-iodized. You do not want iodized salt. And then that'll allow the meat to osmosis with the water, and it'll completely clean out that meat and get a lot of that gaminess away. And aging it, then at the end of that, you'll be ready to cut it and put it in your freezer. Now you said non-iodized, non-iodized salt. Th- that's pickling salt. Am I correct? No, table salt. Table salt works just fine. Oh, uh, table salt. Okay. Non-iodized table salt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it didn't have to be the pickling salt. I got gotcha. you. Okay. No, no, it doesn't. Well, well, talking about, we're getting some questions coming in here now you, well, about aging of that and, and f- taking it from the field. What's the most common mistake most people make with wild game after they they uh, take it and they field dress an animal and they get ready to bring it home what what do they what's the most common mistake made they don't after they harvest the animal itself they don't take care of it properly the one thing that we've seen more than anything is that we would always tell tell the first or the newcomers into the sport take a couple 
old milk jugs full of water and just use that to wash the inside out of the chest cavity. When you're skinning it, make sure you take your knife to the inside and cut outwards because if you cut into the hair, you're going to open up all that hair and it's just going to go all over your meat. Mm -hmm. So go to the inside and cut outwards. Take care of it from the beginning. You will see a difference at the end. And it's everything from getting it washed, getting it cooled. If you can stop somewhere locally and grab a bag of ice and throw in the chest cavity and start cooling it, wonderful, that's good. If you're way out in um, in Oklahoma, it's not way out. We don't have a lot of way out areas. But if you have to pack the chest cavity full of snow, what you're trying to do is get that meat to um, cool the meat down so it doesn't spoil because it's the bones that need to get cooled, not necessarily just the meat. And what you're going to find is that pelt on the outside will insulate that meat longer than you think, and it'll keep that meat and those bones warm enough, and that could start spoiling it prior to it getting cold enough. So if you start from the inside, then that will allow it to get cold longer, I mean quicker. But leave the skin on if, you, if you're if you going to be a few days still out at your camp and stuff. I, I'm not a fan of removing that skin right off. Is it harder to remove down the road? Yes. But it actually serves a purpose. It does help protect the animal, in my opinion. Absolutely. Because I uh, here up in Michigan, I travel from the UP. And that's exactly, unless we have to butcher them up in the UP, I'll bring them back down here with, with the fur on just because of that fact of protecting it. But uh, definitely one of the most important steps is getting that cavity washed out. Yes. We've got another question here. Uh, actually, it's a follow-up back to talking about the sample pack. He said he was actually talking about a multi-pack instead of individuals. You offer them as a multi-pack. Right now, the pricing, we've got it as low as we can go. So if we multi-packed it, it'd just be that item times however many of the other ones you want. So you only have to buy one at a time. Just You can go to the website or, or walk into the Anthony's um, store up there and and just buy what you want, each flavor. Because if we packed them, then you'd be forced to buy whatever we have in the pack. It's kind of like going to the store and buying a, a pack of Gatorade, and you're like, I don't drink those other eight flavors. I got you. Right? No, Nobody gets nope. to pick what you want. Somebody doesn't like the blue. Somebody doesn't like the green. Somebody doesn't like the purple. Yeah, I, I like them all. Right? I do too. But, you know, we're looking at the website right now, and it's a very simple website. You can go on there. You can scroll on wildseason.com, and um, you can just kind of kind of bruise what you have to offer. But not just seasonings you have to offer. At the bottom of the website, you also offer casings for those that do it at home uh, and you have supplies like that. Yes. And even way down at the bottom in the footer of the page, we've also got directions and they're printable. And I believe I sent some with um, the stuff I, I sent y'all, but it's how to make summer sausage, how to make bratwurst. And we do have that to where it's on a PDF to where you can print it at your house also. Right. You set it up. It, it's, it's on a four by six card. And it says wild seasoning using the bratwurst mixes and using the mm -hmm. summer sauce mixes, mi mixes on the other side. So you just follow the instructions yep. that you got here or, like you said, go on the computer, print out the PDF or, or bruise the PDF. And you got all the instructions right here on a simple card or it's on uh, the computer. I know what we're doing this summer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be making some sausage. <laughs> You know, it's it's one of those things that uh, the way you've got into this and, and you become the, 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 the barbecue champion that you have and, and you are, um, it's one of those things that I see you are going into it and you are just, you know, are you still, you know, I, you've got a lot of flavors already. What's the, what's the forecast look like? You got some more coming or what, what what's the laboratory look like at the kitchen? Absolutely. In this upper cabinet, this door right back here, it is full of samples right now. Um, I'll request something, do this, do that, take it home, cook with it. Now, my next thing that we're going to be getting into, and this is my fault that we're not into it right now. I love summer sausage. In our meat shop, we, we did a lot of summer sausage. Um, we, do, we did all the bratwurst. The summer sausage we have 
can be used for making beef jerky also. In the top of the jar comes the little cure pack that you use to cure the meat with. Now, I need to actually come out with a specified jerky spice. Unfortunately, the world, and I, I'm the same way, when you call it something, no one wants to use it for that. Like if you come up with, a in the barbecue world, a rib rub, people think that you can only use it on ribs. Wait a minute. It's good on chicken, too, like mm -hmm. the summer sausage. It can be used in multiple ways. And so I'm actually going to come out. I'm not going to say with a normal because I'm, I'm far from being normal. <laughs> but I'm going to come out with a, a lot more traditional flavors on the jerky. Uh, like the jalapeno and cheese type um, jerky spot. Mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry, that's the summer sausage. Uh, you've got teriyaki and you've got just a traditional country style jerky. I'm going to come out with something that I hate to throw my hand out there, but heck, why not? It's your, it's your podcast. I'm going to flavor the the jerky a lot like what some of the spices are. Okay. Okay. You know what? You, you know you got you always have basic teriyaki jerky and the base, but hey, why not go out there and stretch it a little bit, get a little bit of difference, and step it up, step it up. And I, I'll tell you, I'm my own worst enemy because I don't like teriyaki jerky. <laughs> so anytime I've played with that for anything, I've had to give it to other people that like teriyaki, but that's not my favorite. I, I just can't hardly eat it. It's just something about it. You know, we talked about taking care of venison in the field and what to do there. Turkey season's right around. Is there something special people need to do when they're when they when they get a turkey? Um, it's going to be might potentially be warm. It, it, so, what would you do in in a turkey situation here in about a month and a half? I've always skinned all the turkeys that I've shot. I've I've never been a plucker. <laughs> I, I like skinning them, and but as far as that, it's it's. It's still an animal. You, it, it, you were harvesting it to eat, so take care of it. That's foremost number one. Well, we got a question here Pardon me. Uh, that came in actually yes. last at the end of last segment, but uh, a good friend of ours down in West Virginia, Tim Sias from Lim Walker Game Calls, he asked, uh, what is your recommendation for smoking turkey breast? How long and at what temperature? Okay. Smoking meat has as much to do with your cooker as anything. It's about airflow, okay? I can get into the real science of this, and we can take up the whole rest of your podcast. But it has to do with airflow. I can give you a generalization, mm -hmm. and let's just go with that. Let's say around 260, if we're talking just turkey breast, um, if you want to inject it, I, I love injecting um, game meat. With for flavors, moistness, I would put the grilling addiction on it, and probably I like the Mountain Stream a whole lot. I would put that on the outside, and then smoking it around 260 degrees for anywhere from three to four hours. It really has everything to do with your cooker, um, and I hate to be so vague, but has everything to do with your cooker. And you mentioned airflow, um, more, less. I mean, what what. Where do you kind of want that airflow at? If you have an offset smoker and you're going to run your damper, you need to run your damper. Let that be your inlet and outlet. Keep, keep your fire clean. You don't want a dirty smoke running through your smoker. Okay. Um, that's where you get your bitterness. And when you run it, got a dirty smoke going through, um, what you're doing is you're burning a lot of carbon and it's staying in your chamber burning the carbon out of the wood and it's staying inside the cook chamber and it sets on your meat and have you ever ate barbecue four and five and six hours later and you go oh my gosh i still taste it mm -hmm. what that is that's co2 in your chamber and it's not exiting out properly it's staying and laying on your meat so you need to get the bad smoke out of there and just allow the good embers and that's uh, and the clean smoke to lay on your meat Smoke is a flavor. If it's on venison loin, if it's if you're grilling direct and you're slicing a turkey breast and you're going to be, be grilling it for like, um, gosh, a, a sandwich, you what, what you what you I've drawn a complete blank. Sorry about that. It's all right. What, 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 <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's, a, now. it's a live show you're on a roll now but he, you know what Why, we'll let you get your, get your thoughts back we'll take a break and in the third segment we'll come back and we'll right. pick it up again alright we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this 
And for those of you on the live stream, uh, as you see in the comments, uh, if you really want to go try these out, your local here in Michigan, go see Julie down at Deer Camp. She, he's got a whole whole wall of them uh, to check out, and she can help you pick out what you're looking for and, and, all, and all that for uh, wild seasoning. Hey, uh, do me a favor. Call up uh, FM 123's live cam. I want to come back with that. All right. Give them a quick shout out as we come back. All right, got that one saved. And we need to open this one up here. Good questions tonight, guys. Keep them coming. Absolutely. And gals. Yeah, they sure are. I know it won't be long. We'll be firing up the grill here in Michigan. I mean, I've, I've done a little grilling even in the winter, but mainly it's just missed the car. Are you kidding me? Wow, <laughs> the one and only. All right. Right here, we'll we'll uh, we'll refer to that. All right, stand by, folks. Here we go. In three, two, and one. Welcome back. Third segment of the show, and uh, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but we want to give a quick shout out to M one twenty three FM all the way up in Newberry, Michigan, up in the UP. We're taking a look, live look right now, and yes, Down, downtown Newberry. Downtown. There's there's one car in front of the store there across the street. There's snow on the ground still. Of right. course, it's the UP. And we just missed a car going by. And they're not going to believe us because there's nobody out driving out up there right now. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, that's your live look for uh, Newberry, Michigan. So right. I want to thank them for picking up the show and uh, distributing it up that way for us. So so we're all the way from Oklahoma to Newberry, Michigan. You have to come up sometime. We'll take you up there, and we'll, we'll take you to Kwamina Falls. Maybe do a little grill near the camp. I have done... I've done a cooking class up in Michigan before. Really? Where at? Yep. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's I don't even remember. We Some... flew in. It was actually at a gun club. Okay. And a, lo a local barbecue club um, was putting it on. It actually, it was a store, Great Lakes Barbecue Supply. Okay. They were doing it. And I went up and did it. Uh, it was about 30, 35 people in the class. Yep. Okay. So, so you're for hire for teaching people how to barbecue. Have a whole class? Yeah, we I, I put on full culinary um, classes all nice. over. Yep. Well, I think Julie over at Deer Camp should have you up this summer for a nice yeah. barbecue. Absolutely. They've got room over there. They do. We could have it right out there at the back. Tony and I have talked about that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Tony and I have talked about that. Yep. You come into town. We'll come down. We'll live stream it, and uh, we'll have some fun. And we'll, <laughs> and we'll eat. Then we'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Buck Bates there you does, go. If Buck Bates does say that, uh, I'm probably going to blow this name, Cedar's Pizza in Newberry is the best pizza in town. That's right. I remember him saying Cedar's. Cedar's Pizza. So It's probably the only pizza in town. I don't know. Escanaba is not real big. No. Newberry. <laughs> Escanaba is big. Uh, Tim Sias. Oh, wow, y'all still have snow? Of course we still got snow. It's Michigan, and it's March. We'll have right? snow until April, my friend. Sometimes yeah. May. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be turkey hunting in snow. I've hunted turkey, yeah, sitting in snow. So that's good stuff. But, yeah, so, you know, it, it, it going through all this and, and what we need to do to prepare the meat and what you got in your wild seasonings, um, when you look back where you, where you started from, worried about laying bricks for the rest of your life to where you're at today. Did you ever think that would happen? Absolutely not. Um, I know it's coined a lot, and I'm going to say it. I'm truly blessed at what barbecue, the meat world, has brought to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a wonderful family. My son owns a restaurant just two miles down the road, and it's a barbecue stand. I say stand. Gosh, don't get me wrong. He's it's it's a sellout every day type thing. Mm -hmm. We we cook thousands of pounds of meat every weekend. My wife and I, she's a full blown nurse, does all kinds of stuff at the hospital up there where she's at. I run the warehouse here. Uh, my brother works for me. Very fortunate to have that. We have a 50 by 60 warehouse here, stacked 20 foot tall. We've got a 40 by 40 back behind me, and we've got six containers out back full of product. And 
it just absolutely amazes me the amount of people we have touched in the barbecue world, and that's what we're doing with this wild seasoning. I want to help educate. I want to help bring in the flavors, listen to what's being used and what's liked, and do that. Uh, I just want to morph change, just keep growing what we've got going. And I like the road we're going on. Is it going to be the only road? Nope. I promise you we're going to have something else as I learn what is being used out there. Do you have a storefront down there, or is it uh, online only? No, you can come in and shop here if you want. You can go to the restaurant and shop. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just if you're anybody down in Wellston, Oklahoma, which is close to what biggest city? Oh. Well, all of 1,500 of us, uh, they pretty well know how they can get a hold of me. Text me and say, hey, meet me at the warehouse. <laughs> but we're close to Oklahoma City. Okay. We're about 30 minutes out of Oklahoma City. Okay. Well, you're talking about the direction you're taking about have, helping people to, you know, try different flavors, to, you know, do prepare their meat the correct way or, or a better way uh, to get a, a better flavor out of it. Uh, you know, looking at, at rubs and people, what people use and yours, what what's one of the common mistakes most people make about using a rub or a seasoning on meat? Not putting enough on it. Okay. Um, you're putting it on there for flavor. And how many times have you ever seen, and this is the prime example that I'm going with, is I have never sat down at a restaurant and not seen a salt and pepper shaker. <laughs> Why? Yeah, because people want to change um, the flavor profile. It's, it's, well, in a restaurant setting, it's different. I yeah. mean, they got to come out kind of middle of the road, and people that want it can add it to it. But at your own house, you find that layer and that the, the levels of flavors you like, and now put it on there. Don't be afraid. And when you apply the uh, flavor, this is what I forgot where I was get going at a while ago. Smoke is a flavor, okay? When you put it on and how much of it you put on your food, makes a difference on your palate. Same way with your rubs, your salts, your seasonings, all of that. If you put it on immediately before you put it on your grill, it's gonna be a surface flavor, you're gonna get it right off, and then it's gonna go away. So if you put it on um, and let it marinate in for 30 minutes, it's gonna be a little longer, it's gonna linger into your palate longer. But if you mix it into your meat, let's say some grind, some of your ground venison, ground elk, or ground bear, whatever your preference is, take some of these bratwurst seasonings, um, take some of the wild addiction, mix it into it, let it um, melt into the meat. Do not freeze it immediately. What you have to remember is all of it, all spices, all spices, dried spices are dried. You have to let them rehydrate before it can get into your meat. That's the reason if you put uh, something on your steak and then go straight to the grill, it's only on the surface. It never rehydrated to get into the meat. So if you're going to take a sausage seasoning or the timberline or anything like that and you want to mix it into your ground meat, mix it in, let it sit in your refrigerator overnight, then freeze it. That's the old sausage trick in our meat world that we used to do when we'd make breakfast sausage. Let your seasoning set overnight in a, in a refrigerator before you freeze it. Then it melts and it goes into the meat. And then when you thaw it out, it's not little pockets of salt, sage, things of that nature. It is in the meat itself. Let it work right through it. All right. Exactly. So uh, a question coming um what is your go-to smoke? What's your apple hit? I myself, for long cooks, I like pecan. For what I call short cooks, ribs, chicken, things like that, I like cherry wood. There you go. Pecan. There you go. I see you're getting right into my, my wheelhouse now, man. I, I knew that, I knew this was going to be a good show tonight. I love it. It's, again, it's a hungry yeah. show. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> well, one, one of the guys on here, he says he's putting an order in tonight, so you ought to see an order come through. Don't forget to use the UNJ promo code. That's right, UNJ2020. <laughs> exactly, 2021. So, well, you 2021. Know, before yes. we get to, we got a few minutes here left in this segment, but before we get to the last segment, because I know what's coming on that one. Yeah, that's right. Um, we, we alluded to this just a few minutes ago, and I, I don't mean to get off track with talking about the meats and everything, but you've got something sitting behind you there, leaned up against a wall, and I'd be a little bit... Remiss if I didn't ask you, what kind of bow are you shooting there? That is a PSE Citation. 
Ah, citation. So that means you must shoot a little bit of target as well. I'm assuming I, indoor or outdoor? I shoot a lot of indoor. Okay. All right. Matter of fact, he shoots a lot of indoor. He shoots indoor in his warehouse. Well, from yes. the size of what he was saying, he's got room to shoot there. <laughs> yep. Of course, when the employees leave. When the employees leave. There you go. Uh, that's no, good. they just need to stay out of the way. Yeah. Right. Now, the citation, that's that's new uh, new 2021 that you you got your hands on there? That is correct. What do you think that about it? That is correct. I absolutely love it. I love the shoot-through riser. I love that stiffness. I have a Perform X also, which is a shoot-through, and that was my favorite bow. And I've had, I'm have i a PSC person from way back. Okay. I've had, from 1990 on, I've had the old Carol, Carol Intruder, PSC Fire Flights, Mox, I see, I had a Mox 6, a Mox 7, and a Mox 9. Um, the old solo cams. I had some some of the Mojo solo cams. I've, I'm an old PSE dude by by diehard. I guess you can say. There yep. you go. That's nice. Yeah, I'm nothing better than a PSE fan. Yeah. So you uh, you shoot there in the local uh, the local ranges. Do you travel when you you do your outdoor shoot or your indoor shoots? I I don't travel as much as I used to. Um, this year, or I'm sorry, last. Yeah, last year I did go up and do the big Lancaster shoot, and I don't usually about the time I get into the, the some of the bigger tournaments are going on, we're going to start cooking, and you know I can I can make some money at cooking the indoor the big tournaments that you spend a thousand dollars travel and getting to and all that. Don't get me wrong, I I love to shoot that that's my second passion. But I'd rather go make two, three thousand dollars cooking. <laughs> well, you got to go with the bread and butter, you know. That's good. That's right. That's awesome. Well, um, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things. You you, you go, you get in your wheelhouse, and yeah, definitely, I get it. Stick uh, stick with what you know and make money, at it and you'll be all you, right. You you you're back at dabbling in indoor shooting is what you're doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. So you're shooting uh, you're shooting spot faces. I take it indoor. Yeah, I shoot the three spa the three face Vegas and a five spot NFAA. Okay, well, Danny, he's right there with us. Uh, you come up, if you come up here and you wind up over there at Deer Camp, and we're doing some cooking or something here this summer, bring the bow with you, and we'll we'll take you down to the range that we shoot at, and we'll have a little fun. We're not that That's good. Not we're not. Idea. We're not that good, but uh, but we like to shoot so. It's all, all good fun. That's all that matters. Right. We, we, we like to have fun. That's all we like to do. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's, really? Go ahead. You, you're going to say something? I was going to say, then we'll be we'll be right right beside each other because <laughs> I definitely am a, am a hoot on line. There you go. <laughs> well, that's why we like to have fun. you gotta, you got to have a little bit of fun on the line and mess with the next guy. The problem is I'm always stuck with Danny right next to me there, so we're giving it to each other both, you know, back and forth, you know. Usually it's him saying, hey, just shut up and shoot. Just be quiet. Quit complaining. <laughs> I'm, his, I'm his mental stability. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like golf, I, I've heard. I, I don't play golf, but... Uh, I, I I see the parallels. Uh, you know, you, you try and you try and you get mad and you get frustrated, and that just makes it worse. So that's the way it goes. Yep. All right. I tell you what. Let's save the what time we got left for the last segment because I know you're chomping at the bit uh, over there. If so. I don't, I'm going to get it. Yeah. You Tam, know how that Tammy's going to let you have it. So right. I tell you what. We'll step outside. and We'll be right back after this. Okay. Folks. All right, folks. Last segment. Get your questions. You know we're going to ask them our typical questions, and uh, Jim. Got the link there on the, the feed there. Go to the website. Use our promo code UNJ2021. Get 10% off your order. It's active now. And then what we're going to do is get him ready for our questions. And I told him these were coming. Now, he does a podcast also, and he's got questions that he tells asks his interviewees as well. Okay. All right. And he's told me a couple of them. So, all right, it's kind of interesting. It's good. Well, maybe, so he knows what we get time in the show. Maybe he can turn it back around on us. Maybe. All right. Oh, I can pull them out and have them ready. There you go. Go ahead and grab them. We, we'll, we'll make time. We'll have some fun here. That's what this is all about. Yeah. I... All right. Here we go. Stand by. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. And uh, we got a quick question here. I just saw pop up. And Todd is asking, any recommendations for a homeowner, for a home personal smoker that you would recommend 
to him. All right. Let's start with what's more accessible for your wood. Um, Tony, if you're listening still, which I hope you are, do you have access to full logs or are you more into pellets? Because pellets are very accessible and can cross state lines. There's a lot of states that don't allow wood shipped in due to the wood borne beetles. Um, so if, if you can get pellets, man, there is a ton of great pellet grills out there. Um, Traeger, Pit Boss, Green Mountain, the, um, Cook Shack. Oh, I'm, I know I'm leaving some friends of stuff out, and I apologize. But if you can get into pellets, it's so accessible. And what I really like about cooking on pellets is that if I'm changing out right in the middle of a cook, I can change my wood and I keep going. I don't have to wait for something to burn down. I mean, just that quick, I can go from cherry, pecan, hickory, whatever you want, and sugar maple, and you just keep going. That's awesome. That is. That is awesome. I've noticed that a lot of people, I mean, I'm hearing more and more about pellets. You know, here in the last couple of years. Well, we can do a whole nother podcast on that. But yeah, pellet cooking, you have to understand how to infuse flavor in it because it burns so clean. But um, And people go, well, I don't get the smoke flavor I get out of wood. Well, you have to learn how to use your machine. And it, all it's doing is burning what you're putting in it. And you have to learn to use it properly. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that's, that's, that's um, you know... Some people might make that mistake and they get it and they don't know how to use it. And all of a sudden, yeah. they're wondering why it's all messed up or it doesn't taste like everybody else says it should. Well, I'll tell you, you know, we're, yep. we're talking a lot about, about food and grilling and, and smoking and everything tonight. And you said that'd be a whole topic for, for another podcast. You've actually got a podcast. Take a chance here. Give a shout out to uh, where you're at and where people can find you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, obviously, it's about barbecue, and it's called the Butcher Barbecue Podcast. How original is that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're on we're on all the, the main players in the game. We've been doing it about 14, 15 months. And so, yeah, I'd have really appreciated it. Everyone go over there and like that. We just uh, published another one yesterday. We have one. We have different segments called Cook's Corner where we spend an hour or so just like what we're doing here, I talk to cooks and help them work through prog pro products that they have problems with, uh, cooking a brisket or cooking pork. And then uh, I've also got a whole lot of them that we go and talk to our business people that we do business with and help people bring things to the market, um, being it rubs or how to market products. We I got a marketing on there. We talk to other sauce manufacturers, just any and everything, just like this. We just want to help educate and, and bring things to the forefront. That's nice. I mean, you know, you think about it. I mean, you, you've got a product here that you're trying trying to sell, and you know that's your your income. But you're bringing other people on to help work through problems and and give them a little exposure. I mean, it's kind of like you're all working together. Oh, it's just like it's just like hunting. You know, everybody want, would would think that. Well, I'm not going to teach you how to hunt. Yeah, it helps the sport, but I don't want you after five miles down the road hunting the same animals that I am. Well, if it brings more to the sport, it, it actually will benefit you down the road. You just don't realize it. And if you don't think that or you think you know how to hunt, teach someone everything, how to read the woods, how to look mm -hmm. at the lay, how to see where they might be coming up a, a mile down from you. Why are they changing and not coming my way now? I'm telling you. After you teach someone, you then realize what you don't know. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, there's never true words been spoken on that. You know, we've been talking about venison. We've been talking about turkey, chicken, pork. We have not been talking about fish. If I were to have a fish, a walleye or a pike or whatever that I'm going to gonna eat, perch, whatever, what would you suggest that I use to put on the fish? Mountain stream seasoning. Mountain stream seasoning. Yep. Matter of fact, I'm I just sure have you to got have one. that right here in my. He's gonna try it. <laughs> Mike's gonna try it because I think I tried it already. Oh man, that smells good. So, so you're this is this is the the, the one to put on fish. Absolutely, and I actually like that on chicken also. But yeah, fish, that was designed for fish. Wow, that is good. Different herbs. Got the citrus. The herbs. That's right. That is really good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So there you go. Now I now I feel better. We just covered all the, the whole entire <laughs> gamut there. That's, That's right. I, I've thought about that. So now, getting in our last segment, it's time for us to ask you some questions that we ask all our interviewees. Now, 
I'm scared. Easy. This stuff's easy. It's easy. So, Dave is traveling. He's got to go to a his another shoot. He's decided he's going to shoot at Lancaster, so he's gonna he's gonna drive there. And what is Dave listening to on the radio when he's driving? I am a classic country person. Um, Willie's Roadhouse on the Sears Radio type world, but I'm not into the new country. I am an old fogey. Prime prime country. I like. I am I am old country. Um, Conway Trudy, Loretta Lynn, those are about the newest I get into. You like both kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> the old yes, stuff. Sir. There you go. Right? Yes, sir. All right. That's one. Next question. You're traveling down the road. You're listening to, to Conway Twitty. You're listening to Willie Nelson. You reach over and you got to have a snack. What's your go to snack that when you're on the road? Probably going to be either beef jerky. Or um, maybe a pretzel. There you go. Keeping it simple. That's right. Let's see this next question. I I already know what it is. That's right. But I, and I'm waiting for the answer on this one because <laughs> I'm right. hungry. Dan and Mike decide we're going to take a trip down to Wellston, Oklahoma, and we show up for dinner. What is going to be the meal that you cook for Mike and Dan? Well, for out-of-towners, I would probably cook barbecue. There's no doubt about it. What kind of barbecue? <laughs> I'm cooking. Yeah, yeah. But I absolutely love good Mexican food. Okay. There you go. A good a good Mexican dish. Nice. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right. We have finished up that Mexican dish, and we are stuffed, and we're going to sit around the, 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 the campfire, and we're just sitting around talking. Um and then you're going to tell us a story that comes to mind that's made an impact from the outdoors or maybe even now in your business that has, has impacted your life. What that would that story be? Well, that's a really deep, hard question, and I'm going to have to think about that while the embers are burning. So while the embers are burning, I'm going to have to think. But <laughs> ultimately... Uh, story wise man i i don't know i gosh that that's a stumper and i'm sure that's where you get a lot of them but uh, i just always want to do something right um i don't know of a great story maybe uh, i'm sorry that's all right so so yeah. so that that's actually perfect because we're going to talk and then you're going to turn around and you're going to look at us and you're going to ask us a question and what question are you going to ask us from your list. My question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you grab oh, okay. your list? Okay. I just opened I the door sure for you. See, he does the same thing on, okay. on his podcast, folks, and we just found that out in the, in the right. commercial break. So so he's got a list yeah. for us. Go ahead. And my podcast is barbecue, so it's kind of food related. And there's mm -hmm. questions that I ask my guest. And since it's food related, we're gonna go with name the worst topping that you could put on a pizza. Anchovies. Onions. What about a burger? Mayonnaise. Oh, can't stand mayonnaise. I hate mayonnaise. Okay. A baked potato. Hmm. Oh, that's just... A sour baked, cream? I don't yeah, like sour cream. A, a baked potato with just butter is, is yeah. the way to go. Ice cream. Worst topping on ice cream. Yeah. Never thought about that. I don't know. Man, that's a good one because... Are we talking like typical toppings or just anything? It's a good question. I right. questioned yours, not mine. Well, he gave the question to us. So it, yeah, I, I got to say probably <laughs> probably mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, All right. One, one other quick question. That'll be it. Okay. I've got a whole list. But this, What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Danny, go ahead. I already know the answer for me. Oh. Uh, well, I, I got to think about it because okay. I don't know it off the top of my head. Crickets. No. no yeah. I can't say I've ever done that. Yeah. Yeah. They were, yeah. were freeze-dried crickets. Kind of tastes like almonds, actually. I have no idea. That's a good one. I got me stumped. I have to think about I, that. My that's going to make me look at almonds all different now. Right? Right. right? Now, my youngest boy, <laughs> who's not young anymore, he's 21, uh, he's eaten goldfish. They were alive. And he's eating worms. 
Nice. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh, I, and tadpoles. I take it back. He had some tadpoles too. Yummy. Yeah. He's not oh, afraid. Wow. To eat, he's not afraid to eat anything. And he loves things hot. The hotter, the better. I mean, ghost pepper, Carolina mm-hmm. Reaper. He's into that stuff. Well, there's a bratwurst seasoning he can try. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right? Buck and Buck Bates says putting ketchup on something. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Ice cream, maybe. Right. It could be anything. You no, know, neither Tony or Julie. Yeah. Right. But so. You didn't ask the question I was going to hope you asked. Was okay. if, if a piece of food fell on the floor, how long would you let it sit there? Yep. That, that's oh, the one yep. I like. I was like, come on, ask them. Yep. The golden five rule. Five seconds. five seconds. Depends on what floor it's five on. Five second rule. Depends on where it's at. Are we outside? Is it the ground or is it a floor in your kitchen or, you know, are right. you at a restaurant? How hungry are you? Yeah, if it's, if it's somewhere public, it, you know, you don't know who's cleaned it. No, it, there's no, there's, I wouldn't right. pick it up at all. So, well, let's throw it back at you. What about you? Which question? How long, if a piece of food fell on the floor, how long would you let it sit there? <laughs> Not very long. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, that's good. Right? That is funny. That's awesome. Oh, well, I tell you, man, it's, it's man, the hours just went by. It, the hour has flown by, and it's been so nice to have you on <laughs> and, and start a relationship and partnership with you and Jay together and, and with having Tony around close by. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get into some kind of mischief at yeah, one point. Yeah, I can see that coming coming down down the road here. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely so uh but you know uh once again before we let you go tonight uh, for those on the podcast that are listening where can they find the seasonings at the promo code and give a shout out once again for your podcast all right our podcast is butcher barbecue bbq butcher bbq podcast you can find that on just about anywhere that you can download a podcast we're on it and the wild seasoning and it's spelt with a Y, W Y L D seasoning.com. The promo code is UNJ2021, and you'll get 10% off of everything on the order. There you go, folks. There you go. It's live and active right now, so go do some shopping, get some wild seasonings, and tell us how you like it. Absolutely. Yep. Follow us on Facebook. We post we post recipes on the different seasonings, things that we use. Well, I'm always coming up with different recipes. We've got some potatoes on there. We've got a meatloaf on there. We use our chili uh, seasoning on in different dishes. So, yeah, you can follow us on the Facebook, The Wild Seasoning, and you'll see some of the different things that, that we put out. And if you got a question for Dave, get on Facebook and send him a question. There you go. Absolutely. Well, for those of you on the podcast, that'll do it for us this week. Next week, we've got Tim Sias from Lim Walker Game Calls. Yes, we do, and it'll be number 600 episodes. Yep, my 600th episode, so don't miss out. We're going to be talking turkey calls, turkey hunting, everything to do with turkeys. And uh, don't forget, he also has a live show Friday nights at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock? Yep. Okay, 7 or 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yep, 8 o'clock. And uh, live on the limb. Live on the limb. But make sure you go over to Facebook. Check out his Facebook page because sometimes that, that night will change depending on if the guest can get on Friday night. But typically it's Friday night. Right. Absolutely. So that'll do it for us this week. Don't forget, go over to David's uh, Facebook pages. Go over to social media. Give him a like, follow, share. Don't forget to share the show tonight. If you could, please, that helps us, helps our supporters as well. And give us a like, follow, and share as well. We'll be back again next Thursday night, same time, 7.30. Y'all take care. And for those of you live on Facebook with us still, Dave, what's your Facebook page again? We have uh, two of them that we can publish out there. It's the Butcher Barbecue and Wild Seasoning. Okay. So, Jim? We get this up and get the podcast running. um, Share it with me, and we will share it on our Wild Seasoning pages. Absolutely. Okay. 7 p.m. Tim Sias just confirmed it. It is 7 p.m. Okay. So make sure you check that out live on the limb. Friday nights, Jim Steffen, Wild Seasoning or Butcher Barbecue is the Facebook pages. There you go. There you go. And Tim, be ready. Next week, episode 600, you're on it. That's right. Y'all be there. Be square. Right. Anything else? Nope. I think we're good to go. 
All right, folks, that'll do it for us here on the live stream. And just like we said before, you know, like, follows, and shares for David's pages and ours. You know, don't forget to share the show. You got any questions for him, get over to his Facebook page, shoot him a message over there. I'm sure that he can point you in the right direction. And get over, use the UNJ promo code, UNJ2021, and get yourself some wild seasoning rubs. Tell you what, stuff's good. I've, we used to sit right here and watch this sample them tonight, and I'm telling you what, they are out of this world. Absolutely. So, uh, David, hang on with us just for a minute here after the show, and uh, we'll chat. But uh, that'll do it for us this week. And like we were saying earlier, don't forget, next week, number, well, actually, it'll be number 300 of the live stream next week. 300 of the live stream. But it'll be episode 600 episode of the podcast. 600 of the podcast. We'll have Tim Sias on from Lum Walker Game Calls. Y'all take care. We'll see y'all again next week.